Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you have been following me in this channel, you know that at university, I really do not take notes. I will show you exactly how I do that in this video. And I will also talk about how and when and why I stopped taking notes. I actually started performing better than I had ever done before. My grades and performance are improving. However, this is how I study. It might not work for you, you need to experiment with a variety of strategies until you find the one that works best for you. My name is Sirat and I received a Chevening Scholarship to study law at Aberdeen University in the UK and now I am studying law in Frankfurt, Germany under Dad's scholarship. And it has been two years that I am living in Frankfurt. When it comes to taking notes, highlighting, summarizing, and rereading are actually ineffective in comparison to active recall, space repetition, and practice testing, which are efficient methods that are supported by evidence and actually produce results. I also try to make this guide more accessible to people outside of law school as well, so this is not just for law students. For instance, if you are studying for a college or any other courses, you can use the advice I am providing here. You will be able to do better in whatever you are studying, law students and lawyers. I know some of the techniques might make you laugh and make you think poorly of me before you see this video all the way through the end. Because we cannot easily prepare for the exam in law school because it's all about case studies. Some of the methods I demonstrate may not apply to all courses in law school. We just get a case to resolve using our analysis and judgment. So Ankia, a no app or a no note taking strategy can help us. But believe me, it had helped me in many ways the techniques that I am explaining. There are a few prerequisites for watching this video. You must know Anki. It's a free app. It does not sponsor me in this video. I have a video about it and the link is in the descriptions below. In general though, you should know that it is a flashcard app that helps you study and remember information. When I'm studying, I use both the Pomodoro technique and the Feynman technique on a daily basis. So let's get started. What strategy do I use every day? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the core strategy is space repetition, active recall and practice testing. My education is built on these three pillars. Highlighting, rereading, and summarizing are not my style and I avoid them at all times. I do use highlighters uh, like this, but only for color coding bullet points on my daily or weekly to-do list, but not for note taking or studying. Plan, preview, view, review, practice test, and repeat. Therefore, I prepare my weekly study schedule based on the material I will be exposed to the following week. Therefore, if I notice that topic X is on Tuesday, topic Y is on Wednesday, and topic Z is on Friday, I will review those subjects the day before. Therefore, for instance, if topic Y is on Wednesday, I review topic Y on Tuesday. I like to be prepared and knowledgeable about the subject before I hit the lecture, Zoom lecture, recording or other event, whatever. And why am I carrying this out? Well, this is supported by evidence that getting a good night's sleep will help you consolidate and optimize what you have learned or studied. And two, it is just when I show up to the lecture with more knowledge of the subject, this way I learn it better, am able to focus better and am able to ask better questions and participate and answer the questions more logically and get a deep understanding of the topic when it's further explained by the professor or the classmates. Now that we know that we are going to study uh, and in what order, we need to decide how we are actually going to study. I want to start by skimming through the entire PowerPoint, lectures, notes, or whatever it is that I will be learning the following day. This should only take me somewhat around 5 to 10 minutes. 
depending on the material. I simply want to get a general idea and understanding of this subject and the topic. Second, I want to understand every important terms, new terms. If there is a term in the lecture that I do not comprehend, such as net barter, income duty, double factorial duty, or other terms, I would like to look it up so I can learn more about that term in Google or YouTube. However, if that piece of information does not stick uh, in my head, I will create a flashcard about it in Anki. Anki is overwhelming to a lot of people, especially in the beginning or just in the beginning when you really don't know how to use it properly, but it is just an electronic flashcard app and don't be afraid of it. Download it, it's free, watch one video on YouTube how to use it and just start making some flashcards. Believe me, it's going to change the way how you are going to study and your, your grades will skyrocket if you are worried about them. Now that I have a general understanding of the lecture and have comprehended all of the terms, we need to take a little bit more time to actually comprehend what's being discussed in this lecture. Now I want you to look uh, for a third party resource rather than just reading the lecture. This could be a chapter in a textbook or a YouTube video as YouTube videos are available for virtually every subject. Sometimes you can find content creators, students, experts, or even your classmates who create better learning material than your professor. Like maybe he's a blogger or she's a blogger or a YouTuber and explain things on her his YouTube channel better. I just want you to try to get a feel for what's going on by watching a video, read a chapter in the book without taking notes. Additionally, when you have just finished watching the video, ask yourself, okay, could I briefly explain to them what's going on in this video and provide a helpful introduction to the subject? And if you wanted to test this friend's comprehension, how would you do so? What questions could you ask them? After that, I use those questions to create flashcards. The fourth step is to make relevant flashcards. Therefore, I would turn the important and difficult chapters into flashcards after watching a couple of videos about it, reading chapters or reading summary and so on. So this is where the magic happens, creating the flashcard. This is where you're going to convert this information into questions to test yourself until your final exam. Anki, which is a free app again, will then space out when it's going to ask you these questions based on when it thinks you need to be tested again. So you remember this information in the long run. So a few points on creating flashcards. The first thing is don't memorize, understand. When I first started creating Anki flashcards, I would kind of fall into this trap of just memorizing. In order to prepare for your exams, you will turn the information into questions. Then Anki will space out the questions based on whether you answer them correctly or not. It asks you these questions based on when it thinks or the algorithms think you should be tested again to ensure that you remember the information over time. So here is a few thoughts on making flashcards. The first thing is to comprehend rather than memorize. That means try to understand the topic. When I first started making Anki flashcards, I would sometimes just memorize things. For example, if I was learning about commercial arbitration, I would understand, okay, commercial arbitration is just out of court dispute resolution, but I didn't understand why commercial arbitration is created at the first place. I didn't understand the philosophy of arbitration. I didn't understand the difference between mediation and arbitration, which is some pretty basic information, right? So you should know that before you start learning about negotiations or arbitration or mediation, you should know adjudication. Now these little facts that you might be testing yourself on Anki are important, but the general understanding is more important. Number two, limit the number of cards you create. If you make a flashcard for each and every piece of information presented in the lecture, you will produce an excessive number of flashcards and become overwhelmed. 
Additionally, these flashcards ought to be short blaze cards. I won't go into great detail about the Anki or making flashcards, however I will provide a link to a video below that shows you how to actually create better flashcards. Keep in mind that you want your flashcards to be brief and to the point. Last but not least, when you are making uh, these Anki flashcards, check to see if they are already in a deck you have already made or something similar. For instance, I hardly ever make cards because uh, regarding IT because there are so many pre-made decks available online. Based on questions I have missed on practice tests, I probably make around 5 flashcards per topic. However, you will probably need to make your own cards from scratch if you do not have access to these pre-made decks by other people, which might not be available for many different courses. That concludes the information preview. Fourth, we will create flashcards to simulate explaining the material to a friend and then test our understanding of it. This is the day preceding the lecture. I show up on the day of the lecture, seminar or class, sit there and just watch. I try to become involved and interested in what is going on by paying attention, listening and analyzing the arguments. I will think to myself two to three times during the lecture, okay, what is a question I could ask myself? As we go through the slides and the instructors kind of teaches us this new information. Based on what they are presenting now, what kind of question might he or she ask on the test? Could I explain to a friend what is being taught right now? Then possibly during the lecture or shortly after, I will immediately open Anki and create flashcards based on the question in, or the questions in my head. So I'm going to study the flashcards I made and use Anki to make sure I understand everything. Possibly tweaking them slightly, adding or removing words, adding notes, or doing whatever else makes these cards stick to my brain. I probably won't look at that PowerPoint slide or that lecture again. If I ever return to that lecture, I will only be uh, to answer a practice question or an Anki question that I didn't really get it or understand, and I really, or it's something that it really didn't make sense to me. In that case, I would have to go back to the original material. However, I rarely, if ever, return to a lecture. I will never rewatch a lecture again or read the notes again if there is any. I simply won't do it either of those things. The lecture is now complete and Anki is running smoothly. How can we make this even better? How can we advance to the next level and begin to significantly improve our test performance? I have tried every note-taking technique and made videos on this channel about it as well. I have tried a lot of different ways to take notes and you can watch a lot of videos about different ways to take notes. By testing all of them and reading a lot of research papers, I found that summarization or summarizing, rereading and highlighting aren't always effective. In fact, the best way to improve learning are practice tests and distributed practice or space repetition. I frequently answer practice questions and when I make mistakes, I create flashcards based on the incorrect information or the mistake that I have. Finding question online is another important consideration. Does your teacher provide questions? Are there questions in the textbooks back that you have never looked at? Do these questions and as many of them as you can, as the more you do, the better you will be. I will begin answering practice questions as soon as possible and as frequently as possible once I have a basic understanding of the lecture material. Last but not least, you must repeat this on a regular basis. You will improve if you repeat this procedure across all of your classes as I did. This really isn't easy in the beginning, especially for a master's degree in law, because as I already said, a lot of it involves analyzing and writing based on case studies. I know for myself that when I do these flashcards and practice questions, I kind of feel like my brain is working harder and harder than I used to just sit there and reread or rewatch a lecture. Actually, I feel like my brain is working harder and harder, which is of course perfect. 
because I'm learning along the way and my brain functions well. So friends, you can get to work using the Pomodoro method or you can watch my study with me videos, which I have created studying and writing deeply with a very soft and enjoyable music in the background without speaking, without noises and etc. It's of course based on Pomodoro method. You don't have to take the time. That's what I'm doing for you. So some days I will be live and we can do it together. It is for one to two to five hours and we can, yeah, both do our work and studies together. And as I said, you don't have to install any app on your phone or computer. I have the Pomodoro app and we are going through there. You just tune your concentration on your work, play my study with me video and let's learn things together. Additionally, I discovered one thing that has significantly decreased my stress levels and increased my daily study efficiency. I simply write down everything I need to complete the following day or the night before. I won't have to worry about it the next day while everything is already written and planned. When I wake up the next day in the morning, I simply look at the first thing on my to-do list and begin working. The days when I don't have everything planned, my whole day is kind of juggling between this task or do this one and the other one, and I find it very unproductive. Therefore, putting everything together one week ahead or at least one day ahead so that you take advantage of every minute as soon as you just open your eyes in the morning. Previewing is the next step on the list. You can actually learn about the lecture material ahead of time if you prepare yourself. I had professors at university and in school and they were giving us the slides or materials or a heads up for the next class. Unfortunately, I really didn't understand the value of previewing before these classes, especially in high school, but I'm really grateful of those professors at university that had this knowledge and understanding and were sharing the materials before the class and were asking us to review it before coming to the next class. What's the best way to design or plan your day or week? Well, you wake up and complete all of your Anki daily reviews and flashcards for the semester or block or whatever you are studying on a daily basis. Preview the next class or lecture's materials. You would then attend or watch a lecture if it's online. Perhaps make a couple of additional Anki cards if necessary and do some training questions assuming that you feel okay with the covered material. Each training questions you misunderstand or feel you didn't understand it enough, make an Anki card that sort of combines that idea. Then perhaps it would be prudent to take a break. Even though you will be taking frequent space breaks if you are following the Pomodoro method or if you are watching my Pomodoro sessions, this might be a good time to take a longer break as well sometimes to fresh up yourself and gain full energy for the next rounds. And after taking a long break on the same day, um, you should preview what you will learn in tomorrow's lecture class or Zoom call, whatever, then go to sleep. That's how you will be prepared and that's the best way to prepare yourself or prepare your daily or weekly plans. At least that works the best for me. For now, a short summary. First, review your Anki questions. Two, practice exam questions. Three, create new Anki cards if necessary. Four, preview the materials for the upcoming class, read or watch. Short break, attend the class or online or whatever type it might be. Drink lots of water, review the slides and make Anki questions and answers, take a longer break this time, preview tomorrow's materials, sleep. You do all these on the same day. In law school, I study this way, taking no notes despite the fact that I haven't taken notes for the past two semesters, my performance and grades are outstanding. This is just how I study, as I have said before, it might not work for you, but you need to give it a try. This might be the perfect style for you. You need to figure out and play around with various strategies, sometimes customize it until you find the one that works best for you. For instance, if you like this strategy for two to three months 
and find that your scores actually drop, stop using it and don't use this strategy. You can sort of improve your score by using the strategy you have previously used or maybe try a new method. However, I believe that this method is difficult but has the best outcomes for you to perform perfectly on your exams and tests. Only if you implement this strategy consistently and adhere to it to the 10 pieces of advice that I got you. I hope you like the tips and experiences. Thanks for watching this episode of productivity and note taking. If you learned from this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel to boost the algorithms to spell its magic on the channel. If you like um, this kind of video and topics, you might like to subscribe to my weekly newsletter. And this is like an email that I send every week on Monday. I share a summary of the books that I read and tips like this sort of stuff. And at the moment, it has over 10,000 subscribers and if you like to join this community of amazing plus 10,000 people, please give it a try. The link is in the descriptions below. If you don't like it, you can unsubscribe at any time. You will see a lot of videos on the screen. Click on any of the videos you want and watch another amazing video in this channel. See you in the next video.